people who just a few short years before would have lived and fought beside the Vendeans as fellow Frenchmen and Catholics attempted to execute a genocide against them simply because they refused to betray Christ and his church. And when I say genocide, I mean it. Those, those troops were sent there to kill and destroy everything. The blues, that's what they were called because they wore blue uniforms. The bad guys were the blues. Form infernal columns and kill and burn everything in their path, including women and children. <sighs> Brace yourself. To conserve ammunition, the blues begin daily mass drownings referred to in contempt of the sacrament as patriotic baptisms. The blues, in contempt of the sacrament of marriage, begin what they call Republican marriages, in which one man and one woman are stripped naked, tied together underneath the shoulders, and thrown into the water to drown. Contempt of baptism, patriotic baptisms, and Republican marriages. Brutal. Brutal. And remember what I just said. A few years before, these people would have considered themselves fellow Frenchmen. The revolutionary regime attempted furiously to develop biological and chemical weapons and attempted to poison wells with arsenic. None of those tactics were ever successful, thank goodness. But they were, they were furiously trying to introduce horrific diseases and poison wells and so forth. Ovens were built and used to execute living women and children. The cries of the women and children as they burned alive in the ovens were so amusing to the blues that when they ran out of Vendéan victims, listen to this, they sought out the wives and children of their revolutionary allies to kill for enjoyment. We are now descending into the demonic and the animal at this point. These people aren't just limiting themselves to the quote unquote enemies of their cause. When they run out of people, they go start killing their own people. The blues especially enjoyed the murder and desecration of infants. The blues frequently marched with the severed heads of Vendéan infants piked atop their bayonets to mock the people as they would march through. Heads of infants on the, on the tips of their bayonets. Another atrocity consisted of murdering infants by bayoneting them alive, and then while the infants were still alive, tossing them from bayonet to bayonet. Rape of women, needless to say, before execution was standard practice. These are European people. European Christian people who come under the spell of Marxism and almost instantly will turn to brutality that those in this room can't even imagine. How could you do that? Because Marxism is demonic. It is diabolical. Here's a quote from General Grignon, commander of the First Infernal Column, January 17, 1970, uh, 17, excuse me, 1794, in a letter that he wrote back to Paris. This is one of the bad guys, needless to say. Comrades, note the, note the term, comrades, we are entering rebel country. I give you the order to torch everything that can be burned and to put to the bayonet every inhabitant you encounter on your way. I know that there may be some patriots in this country, meaning his own side. No matter, we must sacrifice them all. He's giving the order to exterminate every single human being regardless of their political affiliation. He's telling these people to kill people who are on their side. Demonic and diabolical. Total dead in the Vendée genocide is estimated to be from 200,000 on the low end to 400,000. The Vendée fought with great courage and valor. And this is, this is the big point here. They fought. They didn't just play defense. 
They fought, and they fought well. They did not engage in the atrocities like the Blues did, but they fought on offense. A lot of people say, well, it's all well and good to say that you're willing to die for your country. The next question is, are you going to be willing to kill for your country? Are you going to be willing to kill for your freedom? That's a big question. And that's one that a lot of people don't like to think about and don't like to talk about. But it's one that's coming up on us. You're going to have to make that decision at some point. Yeah, defense is one thing. Are you going to be willing to go on offense? That's the question. Like I said, um, they fought and they fought with valor and honor. There were very few atrocities, even though, imagine how they were provoked. The, the, think about the atrocities that I just told you about, with the babies' heads on the bayonets, and the tossing, and the rape, and the pe drowning people, and throwing them into ovens. Can you imagine the extent to which these people were provoked? And by and large, they did not engage in retributional or vengeful atrocities. They fought with honor and valor. Many times there were, there were mobs of Vendéans who wanted to summarily execute POWs. And, and people would stop and say, no, we're not going to do this. One, in one occasion, it was stopped by someone demanding that the Lord's Prayer be recited before the execution take place. And that stopped it. And that stopped it. Okay? Approximately 200,000 revolutionary soldiers were killed, the bad guys, in the Vendée War. To this day, the French government refuses to acknowledge that the Vendée genocide ever happened. To this day. Because, you know, rah, rah, the French Revolution was so great and all. It was a disaster. And it was a disaster for France. The courage of France died in the Vendée. When I call them cheese-eating surrender monkeys, it's ever since that. Because the Vendée, that was the last group of the truly noble, truly great, truly brave and heroic French. And it's just been a downward spiral ever since. And now France is one of the most atheistic countries in Europe. It is, it is overtly socialist. They have just elected a socialist government, even though they're, they're financially crippled. They want more spending. And uh, how about Islam? They are being absolutely overrun by Islam, and it's probably at this point too late. It's probably too late. Because on a percent basis, and also because the French people in their atheism, and in their Marxism, and in their self-loathing, no longer have the will to even fight for their civilization, for their country, for France. Is that us? Is that the United States, writ small? Are we just the, the larger version of that? In the United States, the culture in the US is far coarser, far more godless, and far more brutal than the culture in France in the 18th century. Consider the following slides and then ask yourself if brutal violence, rape, and genocide against the enemies of the Obama revolution and the people could happen here, especially if only a fraction of a percent of Christians will stand and fight. So the point I'm making here is think about what Europe was like in the early 18th century, early 1700s. What were the people like? What was the culture like? Now let's look at our culture. Dan Savage, militant homosexualist, quote, learn to ignore the bullshit in the Bible about gay people. Well, this is mild. This is mild. French revolutionaries never referred to the Bible as bullshit in public. I can promise you that. This is extremely explicit. Brace yourself. Amanda Marcotte, paid blogger for the 2008 John Edwards presidential campaign website, wrote, on John Edwards' campaign website, quote, question, what if Mary had taken plan B after the Lord filled her with his hot, white, sticky Holy Spirit? Answer, you'd have to justify your misogyny with another ancient mythology, unquote. That was written on the campaign website of a presidential candidate in the United States in 2008. That pornographic sacrilege 
That's our culture. The entire rap hip hop culture. This was one of the more uh, mild and moderately pornographic images that I can find. This demon here with these two women who are nothing more than pieces of meat. They are pieces of meat. And you ask yourself, well, no, mass rapes could never happen here. Like hell they couldn't. We are hanging by a thread. And here's some, uh, you know, I don't want to pick on exclusively black people. Here's some white American people. Isn't this charming? Yeah, he's mocking anal sex with her. Isn't that wonderful? This is the culture of the youth. This is standard. This is how most young people think and operate. And you think that atrocities couldn't happen here? Of course they could. Um, this is, um, if, have you heard of the show Jersey Shore on MTV? It's following a group of just degenerate, like early 20s, I guess is how old they are, in Jersey City, New Jersey, and their culture and so forth. And this is two of the characters in a bar and she's talking to him, and he just, he just cranks her right in the mouth. And I, I'm sure she's plenty annoying, but can you imagine? I mean, he's, he's just absolutely cold cocking a woman right in the face in the middle of a bar. Th this is our culture. This level of, of moral degradation and trash. This, was one, this is one of the most highly rated programs on television. Your kids and your grandkids are, are tuning in desperate to watch this crap. This is our culture. This just went viral two weeks ago. This is a six-year-old boy who recorded a music video of a rap song that's basically pornographic. The, the, the refrain of this song is, I'm going to make your booty pop. And it's just this six-year-old boy with these, surrounded by these adult women in bikinis singing this sexually explicit rap lyric. And this went uber viral and oh my gosh, this is so funny. Look at that little six-year-old child. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of horrible images involving phallic symbols and so forth that a six-year-old child is being made to do. And oh, isn't that funny? This is our culture. Here's the Black Panther, the new Black Panthers, excuse me, the new Black Panthers. These are the people who are explicitly protected by the Obama regime. Remember when we talked about how in the Vendee there were mercenaries and um, prisoners who were conscripted to fight? Hello? Hello? The other possible source of mercenaries is what? How about Mexican or Latin American drug gangs? How about Muslims? Hello? Here's your Mexican drug gangs. And here's some um, like Occupy type protesters at a pro-abortion rally. This one's holding a sign that says euthanize Christians. This sign says baby killer with an arrow pointing down at him. I presume that perhaps he's, he's paid for some, some woman to abort his own child and he's proud of that. And here's another sign. Um, that looks to be maybe a drag queen, I'm not sure. If Mary had had an abortion, we wouldn't be in this mess. Do you think anything like any of that was going on in France in the 18th century? And yet, look at what those people turned into almost overnight. If you think that a genocide against Christians couldn't happen here in the United States, if you think, oh, no, that's not possible, we're, we're so far beyond that, you're out of your mind. You are in denial. It could happen as soon as they are given license and they know that there would be no lawful consequences for murdering or raping people, it'll be on. So as we were talking about before I started talking in my presentation with the Second Amendment, quick point about the Second Amendment. Your right to keep and bear arms actually doesn't come from the Second Amendment to the Constitution. 
Where does your right to keep and bear arms and protect yourself come from? God. The, the, the Second Amendment, the right for you to keep and bear arms, cannot be rescinded. It doesn't matter. You, you, Hillary Clinton, you go ahead, toots, and you sign that UN arms treaty and watch what happens, you Marxist bitch. Amen. So I started out by saying that the, 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 the motto of the French Revolution was uh, liberté, égalité, fraternité. That's how it started. At, by the end, look what they had tacked on to the end. Ou la mort, or death. Liberty, equality, brotherhood, or death. That was the motto of the French Revolution. Here's a quote from General Francois Joseph Westerman, Christmas 1793. This is a bad guy. There is no more Vendée, Republican citizens. It died beneath our free sword with its women and children. I have just buried it in the swamps and woods of Savonet. Following the orders you gave me, I crushed the children beneath the horses' hooves, massacred the women who, those at least, will bear no more brigands. I have not a single prisoner to reproach myself with. I have exterminated them all. And so tonight, I am wearing the emblem of the Vendée. This is, this, they really didn't have uniforms. They were just pure militia. They were completely ragtag. And the way they identified each other was through this patch, which is the Sacred Heart of Jesus with the cross coming up out of it. That's it. That was their uniform. And that's what I wear tonight. And the great quote from the Vendée general, Henri de la Roche Jacqueline, friends, if I advance, follow me. If I retreat, kill me. If I die, avenge me. Thank you.